Hey guys, welcome to Thistle Downs TV, the official YouTube channel of Thistle Downs Farm. Also check us out on Instagram at Thistle Downs Farm for more awesome content. For today's video, we're gonna convert some galvanized metal stock tanks into raised beds. So this year, I chose to use galvanized metal stock tanks for my raised beds for a couple reasons. First of all, I just love the look of them. I think they pop, I think they're beautiful in the garden. But beyond that, these are big stock tanks. They're two feet wide, six feet long, and two feet deep. That depth is really gonna allow us to grow uh, some larger vegetables, some vegetables with bigger root systems, vegetables with longer tap roots like carrots, things like that. And since they're so high up, it'll just be way better to work more standing up as opposed to hunch over like Quasimodo all summer. Yay for ergonomics. All right, but before we can actually plant vegetables in here, there's obviously a couple things we need to do. And the first thing to do is install some drainage into these stock tanks. They come with a built-in plug down on the bottom on the side, but I just don't think that's gonna be sufficient to really drain this raised bed properly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some holes in the bottom. And to do that, I'm gonna flip this bad boy over and I'm gonna use this metal step bit that I bought from Home Depot that's really gonna eat right through this metal. Before you do that though, when you're drilling into metal, cutting into metal, it can be really sharp. It can create tiny little razor sharp shards that can cut you. So make sure to wear your protection. Make sure to wear work gloves and make sure to wear eye protection. All right, let's get to work. All right, we got all the drainage holes drilled out in these containers, so now it's time to fill them up. But the first thing you wanna do before you fill up your container is find the spot that you wanna put it for the rest of this growing season because once these things get filled up, they're gonna get super heavy and almost impossible to move. So find a spot that's relatively level, gets a solid amount of sunlight, and let's start filling them. In order to fill these up, this is a two foot by two foot by six foot container. This is 24 cubic feet in here. So if you were gonna try to fill this up with all garden soil or top soil, that's gonna get super expensive super quickly. And a majority of the vegetables and flowers that you're gonna grow in here are most likely, the root growth is most likely gonna take place in the top 10 to 12 inches anyway. So filling it up all the way from the bottom with valuable soil is really just a waste of money. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put other organic matter down in the bottom of this thing, and then we're gonna put our topsoil on top. <laughs> we're gonna start with bigger things first. We did some spring cleanup today. You can see my wife back there doing more. We did some spring cleanups. So we're gonna take a lot of that junk that we raked up today, and we're gonna put it right in the bottom of this. We're gonna start with some larger logs and sticks. We're gonna put some leaves in here, might even put some pine shavings in here. All things that are gonna take up a lot of volume in here and allow us to really cut down on the amount we have to spend on topsoil. So let's start filling. All right, I had to pause production real quick there because right after we got done filling these with all our sticks and logs, we just got hit, you know, with a random snowstorm. So welcome to the Northeast. Anyway, it's a few days later, a little bit of a rainy day, but we're gonna forge onward. All right, so I filled the bottom of this bin with all my sticks and logs, but I still wanna fill in all these gaps because once again, I don't wanna waste valuable topsoil falling down there and not being used by the plants. So a cheap way that I'm gonna do this is by using these eight cubic foot bags of pine shavings that I bought from Tractor Supply. These are gonna work nicely to fill in all these gaps. They were only like six bucks a bag, super affordable, and they're eventually gonna break right down into the soil. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put one of those eight cubic foot bags in all six of my raised beds. All right, now that all the gaps are filled in with wood shavings, the next step is to decide what type of soil mixture you wanna use. I'm gonna use roughly a one to one to one mixture of peat moss, organic gardening soil, and a, a compost manure blend. This is gonna be my first summer gardening at our new house, so I don't actually have a compost pile or anything like that yet. This year, I'm gonna buy my compost, and hopefully next year, it'll be my own compost that I use to amend the gardening soil for next year's garden. 
I'm gonna try my best to mix it in my wheelbarrow. Might get messy, but let's get to work. Well, this is just a peat moss, so this clearly is not gonna work. So, on to plan B. This raised bed is finally filled. It's ready to be planted. Just gotta wait about another week just to be safe, make sure all those frosty nights are gone. And unfortunately, I have to do this five more times. So a lot of work ahead of me. I'm gonna get going on that. I'll probably make another video when I actually plant things in my raised beds. And other than that, I just gotta spray the crap out of my truck because it is dirty. All right, see you guys later. Thanks for tuning in.